Once upon a time, nestled within the picturesque confines of a small American town, there thrived a baker whose reputation for culinary mastery was surpassed only by his reputation for miserliness. His bakery, a humble yet inviting establishment, stood as a testament to his craftsmanship, yet its threshold was seldom crossed by warm smiles or expressions of gratitude. This baker, whose name was Mortimer Finch, possessed a talent that was undeniable. His bread, delicately crafted with precision and care, boasted a softness that could rival the down of a swan. His cakes, adorned with intricate designs and infused with flavors that danced upon the palate, were the stuff of dreams. Despite the undeniable allure of his confections, Mortimer's demeanor was as sour as the lemons he occasionally used in his pastries. In his dealings with patrons, Mortimer adhered strictly to the principle of parsimony. Never one to offer an extra slice of bread or a generous dollop of frosting without exacting payment, he viewed each transaction through the lens of profit and loss. His countenance, perpetually furrowed with displeasure, rarely softened into a smile, much to the disappointment of those who entered his shop seeking not only sustenance but also a moment of warmth and cheer. Yet, despite Mortimer's frigid exterior, the allure of his baked goods was undeniable. The scent of freshly baked bread, infused with the warmth of the oven and the love of its creator, wafted through the streets, beckoning passers-by with its irresistible aroma. Customers, drawn by the promise of culinary delights, would traverse the cobblestone streets to reach Mortimer's bakery, their mouths watering in anticipation of the treats that awaited them. Some patrons, upon entering the bakery, would succumb to temptation and indulge in Mortimer's offerings on the spot, their eyes alight with pleasure as they savored each delectable morsel. Others, however, chose to remain outside, content to bask in the fragrance that permeated the air their senses inundated with the heady aroma of freshly baked bread and sweet confections. It was this latter group that vexed Mortimer most profoundly. From behind the counter of his shop, he would cast wary glances at those who lingered outside, their nostrils flaring with each inhalation of the fragrant air. Thieves! He would mutter under his breath, his brow furrowed with disdain. Thieves, all of them, stealing the fruits of my labor without so much as a coin to show for it. In Mortimer's eyes, the scent that emanated from his bakery was not merely a byproduct of his craft, it was a commodity to be hoarded and protected at all costs. To see others reveling in its ephemeral pleasures without offering recompense was an affront to his sensibilities, a theft of the highest order that demanded retribution. One winter morning, as the chill of the season permeated the air and frost clung to the window panes of Mortimer's shop, the baker found himself confronted once again by the object of his ire. Peering through the frosted glass, his breath forming misty clouds against the pane, stood a young man clad in threadbare garments, his face illuminated by a hungry gleam. The young man, his eyes alight with anticipation, 
drank in the sight of Mortimer's freshly baked bread, a smile tugging at the corners of his lips. He made no move to enter the shop, content instead to stand outside and revel in the tantalizing aroma that filled the air. For Mortimer, this sight was the final straw. With a snarl of indignation, he flung open the door of his shop and stormed outside, his breath forming puffs of steam in the frigid air. Thief, he cried, his voice laced with venom. Thief, how dare you steal from me? The young man, taken aback by Mortimer's outburst, recoiled slightly, his smile faltering. I beg your pardon, he stammered, confusion etched upon his features. Do not play the fool with me, Mortimer spat, his eyes blazing with fury. You stand there, breathing in the scent of my bread, yet offer nothing in return. You are nothing but a common thief, stealing from an honest man. The young man, his expression a mixture of bewilderment and disbelief, shook his head slowly. Sir, I assure you, I meant no harm, he protested, his voice tinged with sincerity. I merely wish to savor the fragrance of your bakery, to bask in the warmth of your creations. I have no coin to offer but I meant no offense. But Mortimer would hear none of it. With a growl of frustration, he seized the young man by the collar of his coat and dragged him through the snow-covered streets, his grip unrelenting despite the young man's protests. Their journey led them to the doorstep of the town judge a man known for his wisdom and impartiality. Despite the early hour, the judge received them with grace and patience, his demeanor unruffled by the disruption to his morning routine. With Mortimer's accusations ringing in his ears, the judge listened attentively as both parties presented their case. Mortimer, his voice trembling with indignation, painted a picture of a brazen thief, intent on pilfering the fruits of his labor without offering so much as a coin in return. The young man, in turn, pleaded his innocence, his words imbued with an earnestness that spoke of genuine remorse. After hearing their accounts in full, the judge fell silent, his brow furrowed in thought. For several moments, the only sound that filled the room was the crackling of the fire in the hearth, the flames casting flickering shadows upon the walls. At last, the judge spoke, his voice measured and calm. It is clear to me that there has been a misunderstanding, he began, his gaze flickering between Mortimer and the young man. The scent that emanates from Mortimer's bakery is indeed a product of his labor, and as such, it is his right to derive profit from it. However, it is also true that the air we breathe is a gift freely given, a bounty that knows no boundaries or restrictions. Turning to Mortimer, the judge continued. You accuse this young man of theft, yet what has he truly taken from you? The fragrance that fills the air around your bakery is a thing of beauty, a testament to your skill as a craftsman. To deny others the simple pleasure of savoring that fragrance is to deny them a moment of joy a fleeting respite from the trials of life. 
Mortimer opened his mouth to protest, but the judge held up a hand to silence him. I have reached my decision, he declared, his voice firm. The young man shall not be punished for his actions, for no crime has been committed. However, it is only right that he compensate you for the scent that he has enjoyed. With a flourish, the judge produced a small pouch from the folds of his robe, its contents clinking softly as he held it aloft. These coins, he announced, shall serve as payment for the fragrance of bread. Let them be a reminder to you, Mortimer, that there are some treasures in this world that cannot be bought or 